Good morning, and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Beth. On yesterday's call, we started talking about seven reasons why, well, you may be down, but you're not out. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah is right. In Luke 13, verses 10 and 11, Luke 13, 10 and 11 in the Classic Amplified, it says, Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And there was a woman there who for 18 years had had an infirmity caused by a spirit, a demon of sickness. She was completely bent forward and utterly unable to straighten herself up or to look forward. This woman had suffered for 18 years. No doubt the enemy had come to steal her hope, kill her dreams, and destroy her faith. But it didn't work. I'm confident the enemy was laughing at this woman, encouraging her to denounce her faith in God and his word. In Luke 13, verse 12, in the New Living Translation, Luke 13, 12, it says, When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Hallelujah. This woman was in the temple, not in the temple. By accident, she was there for a divine appointment in the midst of her pain in previous 18 years. This woman was expected. Hallelujah. In Luke 13, carrying on in verse 13, in the Amplified Bible, Classic Amplified, it says, Then he laid his hands on her, and instantly she was made straight, and she recognized and thanked and praised God. Notice how she recognized that's exactly right hallelujah who it was that gave her back before we before we finish the teaching we're going to do a brief review from yesterday number one the woman still had faith even though through 18 years of pain and probable humiliation of her condition the woman had faith she had faith that her condition could change hallelujah Proverbs 24, 10, Proverbs 24, verse 10 says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Jesus even recognized the faith of this woman. Listen to how he referred to her in Luke 13, 16. Luke 13, 16. It says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound to lo these 18 years, be loosed? from this bond on the Sabbath day. If you feel the enemy has had you bound, hold fast to the confession of your faith. Your miracle is on the way. Hallelujah. Mm. Number two, the woman came to the right source at the right place and at the right time. In our daily lives, we need to be mindful and make sure that we're positioning ourselves for victory. In 1 Thessalonians 1.3, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 in the Classic Amplified, it says, Recalling unceasingly before God, and, excuse me, God our Father, our, your work energized by faith and service, motivated by love, and unwavering hope in the return of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. Truly, the woman was energized by faith when she went to the temple for a divine encounter with Jesus. She didn't know which day it was going to be. She just kept coming to the temple without fail, even in her condition. In 1 Thessalonians 1.4, 1 Thessalonians 1.4 in the message, it says, it is clear to us, friends, that God not only loves you very much, but also has put his hand on you for something special. When the message we preached came to you, it wasn't just words. Something happened in you. The Holy Spirit puts steel in your convictions. We need to make no mistake about it. God has his hands on us, for, on you, for something special as well. You know, that'd be a great scripture to personalize too, honey. I love that scripture in 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. Third, Jesus saw this woman. Robert, I'm sorry, Psalm 40, 17. Psalm 4017 in the Living Bible says, I am poor and weak, yet the Lord is thinking about me right now. Hallelujah. 
Oh, my God, you're my helper. You're my Savior. Come quickly. Save me. Please don't delay. Yes, our great God, Jehovah, is thinking about you at this very moment. Realize that right now, on this terrific Tuesday, your great God, Jehovah, is thinking about you right now. He sees every tear, hears every laugh, every cry of anguish, every every dream, every sigh of loneliness, every pain you felt, every hope for the future. God sees each of us regardless of the circumstances. And he not only sees what we're going through, he's right there for us 24-7. Mm. Number four, <clears throat> excuse me, the woman listened for the voice of the Lord. Can you imagine how this woman had felt when Jesus called her over? In that moment, she knew there was hope. There are times in our lives when Jesus calls to us with a scriptural insight, a new direction, a correction, or a redirection. But we need to be listening to his voice to receive it. The woman was definitely listening and responded. In John 8, 47, John 8, verse 47, in the classic Amplified, it says, Whoever is of God listens to God. Those who belong to God hear the words of God. This is the reason that you do not listen to those words to me, to me, listen to those words or to me, because you do not belong to God and are not of God or in harmony with him. But those who are in harmony, honey, they listen and then receive their miracle. Amen. <clears throat> now let's pick up where we left off on yesterday's call. Number five. The woman took Jesus at his word. Luke 13, 12, 13, 12, New Living Translation. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you're healed of your sickness. When Jesus told the woman she was free of the infirmity, she immediately straightened up her back. The woman didn't doubt. She was healed. The woman embraced her healing. Question is, do we embrace our healing? We asked my brother Harold, God has never spoken to me the way he spoke to that woman. We have to realize that God speaks to and instructs us through his word every time we open the Bible or enter into his presence. We may not see Jesus like the woman did, but that doesn't mean he is, well, he's always ever present in our time of trouble. The woman's response in Luke 13, 13, 13, 13 was amazing. The woman experienced an instantaneous miracle. And the verse says, she recognized and thanked and praised God. Now think of this, honey. I want to throw this in real quick. And that is the fact that Jesus was one-on-one -on -one back in those days. But think of how he reaches out to all of us through the word, just by opening it up, because the word is alive and it's right there in the word for us to be able to receive our miracles. Absolutely. That's even more real than the woman has. Yes, it is. And see, no matter where you're headed or what you're doing, it's always mm. miracle time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is right. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned, about, turned, turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be a good comfort. Thy faith yes. has made thee whole. That's it. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Their faith is what made her whole. That's right. Hallelujah. When you and I read the word touched or heard the word touched, we think of a, and I, honey, I remember vividly mm. when God gave me this revelation. And we've taught it before. And we've taught it before. Um, but, but when you hear the word touch, most people think of a light, gentle, faint tap, with a hand or finger, a hand or finger or hand. Circular dictionaries confirm that definition. However, it's not, 
<clears throat> but, but, but it's not the definition that's right. of touch that we found in Strong's Concordance. The Greek word for touched, G680, G680. It means to fasten oneself to, adhere to, cling to, just like you just grabbed my arm. That's right. If you're believing God for a miracle, it's going to take more than a light touch of faith. You need to listen, well, listen to what he says, and then to fasten, adhere, and cling to his word, making it one with you. Like clinging like a bulldog, right? That's exactly right. And not letting go. That's exactly right. Too many believers think that a light touch or a momentary embrace of the word is going to be a panacea. To solve our other problems. Not necessarily so. That's right. Not necessarily so. Number six, the woman not only had faith, she exercised her faith. How did this woman feel when she saw Jesus, when she heard him speak to her? Faith brought her to the synagogue. But the hope arose in her when she came into his presence. When Jesus laid holy hands on this woman, she immediately straightened up, something she could never do before in the last 18 years. What changed her attitude? Her faith was strengthened by the words Jesus spoke. That's right. Hope arose and hope arises when we take a step of faith. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1 in the Living Bible, it says, What is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. That is a great um, scriptural interpretation of Hebrews 11, 1. The scripture says that Jesus became the word and dwelt among us in John 1, 14. It's time for us to take the steps of faith to gain our hope for miracle manifestation through the word. Romans 4, 17, Romans 4, verse 17 in the classic Amplified says, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Boy, that's the way we need to be approaching the word. Our faith, our attitude, our hope in the word will cause non-existent things to bring them into existence. Hallelujah. Number seven, the woman didn't forget to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 13, 13, classic Amplified Bible. Then he laid his hands on her. And instantly she was made straight, and she recognized and thanked and praised God. She recognized, thanked, and praised God. King James Version of that scripture, Luke 13, 13, says, And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. She knew. According to Strong's (laughs) Concordance, the Greek word for glorified, G1391, 1391 means to praise, extol, magnify, celebrate. Honor, to make renown, render Ill, uh, uh, to render illustrious, to cause the dignity and worth of some person or thing to become manifest and, and just exempt. Acknowledge. Just acknowledge, yeah. <laughs> Psalm 9, 1, 2. Psalm 9, 1 and 2. New Living Translation. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell you of all the marvelous things you've done. I'll be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your holy name, O Most High. Hallelujah. Yes, I've got to immediately heal the woman's back. Hallelujah. But she'd been waiting for that miracle for 18 years. Mm. You may have been waiting for a miracle. For a long time. You may be down as well, not by a crooked back. But under the weight of emotional, physical, spiritual, financial problems. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. Your answer, your miracle, is on the way. Hallelujah. Can somebody say, Hallelujah? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you've been blessed with the teaching, go to heraldhearing.com, click on the button that says Soul Seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says, that's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you, happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you, we appreciate you, God bless you. Bye-bye.